everybody. From Salt Lake City, Utah, it's Thank God I'm Atheist, the podcast. I'm Frank. And I'm Mark, possibly sitting in for Dan for the very last time. Oh, not the last time. Maybe. <laughs> Ever. If he comes back. <laughs> if. <gasps> what have you done, Mark? Shh. <laughs> Frank's gone to a farm upstate. Oh, sorry. Dan's gone to a farm upstate. Oh. <laughs> yeah, he'll be fine. Yeah. Oh, it's a beautiful place. He's chasing rabbits. <laughs> He loves chasing rabbits. Mm -hmm. And coming up today on the show, we're going to be talking uh, a bit about uh, General Conference. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, which of course, for those of you who don't know what it is. It's, it's when a bunch of generals come together. And conference. And talk about war stuff. <laughs> no, it's a big nasty Mormon thing. We'll get into it later. Well, welcome once again, Mark. Thank you. It's yeah. great to be back. I've, I've enjoyed my sojourn here. Third time in, in a row. I think that's the... Yeah, longest we've ever had a guest, one single guest host. In wow, a row. I don't think we've ever done three in a row. It's I, an honor. Yeah, so so thank you so much. Yeah, happy we've to be been here. Getting great great feedback, wonderful response from listeners. So yeah, you haven't heard from my parents yet. No, well they'll no. be calling in <laughs> once they figure out what the internet is. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of advanced, isn't it? Yeah, the, the podcasting thing. People have a hard time figuring out. Anywho, uh, what do you have any stories you want to start with? Uh, yeah, I've got some some great stories this week. Um, <clears throat> one of my favorites is uh, um, Franklin Graham. I think we all know who Franklin Graham is. If you don't, he's the son of uh, Billy Graham, mm. uh, the, mm -hmm. uh, who I think is he still. I think Billy Graham's still alive. I think so. Ish. <laughs> I think he's still alive. And, and Christopher Hitchens once described uh, Billy Graham as America's leading anti-Semitic peasant. Oh. <laughs> so his his son, the who's fallen awfully close, the acorn has fallen awfully close to the tree, <laughs> Franklin, uh, recently said that Obama is guided by Islam to support same-sex marriage and abortion. As people guided by Islam tend to do. Yeah. yeah. As uh, just <laughs> like Sharia commands. <laughs> I'm uh, honestly, how do they never, like, I think I said last week, it's this inability to think to the end of a thought. Yeah. Just walk a little further down that idea. <laughs> and when you get to the viewing point, to the vantage point, go, yeah. oh, that's a really dumb thing to say. Yeah. 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 Because there's no more natural constituent than modern american gay people and yeah. uh insane fundamentalist islamic uh crazy people hey as long as as long as they're bad as long as right. the, you know the group that they're talking about is bad then that's kind bad. of that's, that's all you need that's kind of it you just it's like when they call you know obama a muslim communist socialist nazi nazi it's like guys <laughs> those are different things <laughs> <laughs> you can you cannot like any of them, right? But when you don't know what any of those things really are, yeah, then yeah, you can just go nuts with all of them. Yeah, just right? throw that shit against the wall yeah. and see what sticks. But it <laughs> it just makes me laugh every time I see one of those. Well, clearly he's a Muslim, so he wants gay marriage. <laughs> oh, dude. <laughs> Wow. So that's kind of all there is to that story. It's just, oh, that's it? It's, yeah, it's just really Franklin Graham being a public idiot. Yeah. <laughs> America's village idiot. <laughs> well, thank you for that update on yeah. Franklin Graham. Thanks, Franklin. All right. Well, I, I also have an update mm. uh, that I think is worth bringing up uh, concerning the frfrf. 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 Um, uh, we talked about it, oh, gosh, um, a few months ago. Uh, this uh, school down in public school down in Georgia uh, that uh, where the, I think well, the story that we covered talked about one teacher. I don't remember there being two teachers. This one talks about two teachers, uh, but um, that were involved uh, in this insidious um, um, in these insidious efforts to uh, force these kids in their classes to to pray. Um, this is, I mean, we, this, this is one of those things that was settled a long time ago. Prayer in the public schools at the start of the day is just not, not cool, not allowed. And, uh, these teachers were still doing it. And, uh, it's a, so a kindergarten teacher and a first grade teacher at Swainsboro primary school, um, were, were involved in this whole thing. And they singled out st any student who, uh, whose parents would complain 
about the, the, the these activities. <laughs> oh, of course. So this is. this one child finally s- steps forward, uh, and well, his parents really are the ones who probably really you know stepped forward. But they they force this kid. Um, he was eventually so worn down uh, by the teacher's comments that he just joined his classmates in religious activities, even though his parents explicitly objected to it. Conversion. Congratulations. Yeah. Well done. You just bullied this child into doing something he doesn't believe. Hallelujah. What a great life lesson that is. Yeah. Uh, so, and what an awesome person you are. Yeah. Uh, so, so anyway, the, um, the, the, the school district has settled with the furfurf um, and with the parents. And there is uh, an undisclosed amount of money that's oh, being good. paid to the parents. Right. Um, so that's, that's awesome uh, because they need to feel the, the hurt on yeah, this one. And yeah. the other districts need to know that you're going to part with some money if, right. you, if you do this. Uh, and then also um, the district has agreed to provide better training for teachers uh, to remind them <laughs> that, that they're not supposed to promote religious belief in the classroom. Here's the entirety of that better training. Knock that shit off. <laughs> that's that's it. what it should be. Yeah. That's all it needs to be. That's all it needs to be. You know, uh, everyone, I'd like to remind you that back in the 19, what was it, 50s, the Supreme Court settled this issue def- yeah. like definitively yeah. for this nation. We don't pray in the public schools. The kids, you know, the, the students, they may, they can pray on their own. Yes. You know, that that's totally allowed. But teachers, administrators, any sort of staff at a school, they cannot lead or the students force or force the students or set up a, a, a prayer opportunity. Yeah. Even uh, it, it's something that organically would have to come forward. We did kids. it all the time in my high school. Are you serious? Oh, yeah. My Salt Lake City Public School. We were no forced. Way. Oh, yeah. On my athletic team, the coach would make us, when the bus got to wherever we were going for for our competition, He would st- we had to stop, and he would pick somebody who then had to offer a prayer. Wow. Yeah, all the time. No, that's, I mean, I guess I shouldn't be too surprised. I guess I'm surprised that it happened in, <clears throat> no, I'm not surprised that it happened in Salt Lake. Um I mean, because like in rural Oklahoma, it happened. Yeah, but it's rural Oklahoma, and it, happened, the, it must have happened in your high school. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Teachers we, we, leading stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I remember there was some sort of it. It, it was pretty explicitly done, uh, and then there was some school district that was sort of a very similar sort of thing where they were forced to not do it anymore right. through a lawsuit, and so our school district they 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 clamped down on it. And but like I, I still remember there being like uh, um, very coded sort of uh, prompts from teachers, you know, before a big God. event that um, you know, well, we've been told we can't pray or ask anyone to pray. So how um, about you, Frank? So Jennifer <laughs> over here, yeah. she's uh, wow. she 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 said earlier that she wants to pray. So. We're going to let Jennifer pray. Yeah. Like, and it was, so it was just stupid. It was, there was this big dance around it and they thought they were being all fucking clever. Right. You know, um, I do remember our band, uh, our band teacher, he was, he just didn't fucking care and he didn't care about anything. Like he, you know, smoked on the school bus or whatever, you know what <laughs> I mean? Like he, he, fucking didn't, he didn't smoke on the school bus, but uh-huh. he, he just absolutely <laughs> didn't care about the rules and he just would just be like hey uh so and so uh let's have a prayer before you know whatever and i actually appreciated that more than than the the sort of the debt the the tap dance yeah i I mean that was just it was i I could tell that guy was a fucking idiot yeah you know who thought he was clever he was just a hillbilly who thought he was smart right oh that's the way i'm gonna get around this (laughs) i'm on the right side of law now who wants to pray (laughs) yeah it's so it was so common in my public school upbringing and i was you know because as i described a little bit a couple shows ago i was never really a believer even though i was surrounded yeah you know i was the the disbeliever in mecca right um so i was vaguely aware that nobody was supposed to be doing this but since everybody was i'm like oh well that's not an enforceable law or it's not right. a major law or it's not a really a thing. Right. And, you know, everybody's Mormon. Everybody's so. Mormon, yeah. 
We we prayed at our graduation. We prayed oh it before assemblies. We prayed. Well, I mean, before football games, I just. Your neighborhood was really Mormon, right? Yeah, Back and then. my school, yeah, absolutely. Oh, wow. Like <laughs> north of ninety-five percent, I would guess. Wow, yeah. times have changed. Yeah, it's down to like ninety-two. <laughs> <laughs> it's slipping. <laughs> All right, what's, yay for for <laughs> what's next? Next is uh, this is great. <clears throat> this is a this is a happy story, mm. uh, and the last one was a happy story. Uh, so Norway has this really strange situation and i don't quite get it so i'm gonna have to ask my friend phil who is a norwegian what the fuck is up with this but in norway the state allots churches money oh okay based on membership and i don't know why i don't know like norway is such an enviable country in so many ways um you know it's a it's a decent place yeah. And they have that awesome seed bank, and they do all these cool things. But um, for some reason, the the state allots churches money. So, so they kind of collect the tithes for them uh, somehow from tax. For th- like they're tax, they're subsidized by the state. Oh, okay. Which is not cool. So just from the general <laughs> taxation from fund. The as I understand whatever, it, from the general fund, right? Okay. So the, <laughs> the oh, Catholics. So the Catholics. Well, they fibbed a little. <laughs> they just fibbed a little. <laughs> and they, they overinflated uh, their, their membership by many, many thousands of people. Oh, no. Um, so <laughs> somebody noticed. Some officious Norwegian noticed. Uh-huh. Hmm. This doesn't seem right. I don't see anyone in the churches when I walk by. I don't know if that's Norwegian. <laughs> it's a little more German. Yeah. Uh, so anyway... The the Catholics overbilled the the government by five million dollars. That that's not a small change. That's okay. not chump change. I mean, it's chump change for the Catholics, but it's you know Norway's a small country, so <laughs> uh, that really pissed off a lot of people. So this year has been a banner year for people leaving religion in Norway. First, first of all, get over your shock. There's religious people in Norway because they actually have an education system and. Right. They've been around a while. So, right. But apparently there are religious people in Norway, and, and, and there's probably a lot of cultural Catholics and cultural Lutherans, I think is probably the biggest church uh, in, okay. I think, in Scandinavia, the Lutheran church. <clears throat> Let's just say it is, and then <laughs> we'll be corrected if we're wrong. Yeah, send us a postcard from Norway if we're wrong. So, <laughs> so 11,000 people have resigned their church membership this year uh, in Norway. And I, it's not good. it's not clear whether it's just Catholic church membership, but this article f- seems to insinuate that. OK, um, but they've gotten help in doing so from an app. Oh, that's isn't that delightful. The reason apps should be <laughs> so somebody, some smart cookie, some smart kuchen over there invented an app for people to resign their church membership. There needs to be one of these for the Mormon church. Hello. So somebody in this audience must be an yes. app developer or a teenager who knows how to do this <laughs> kind of thing. Wouldn't that be awesome? Because you could, I mean. I think it's doable. I think it is doable. I think you could figure out the right way to collect up the information. Yep. A little thing, a little terms or whatever and yep. that you have to check to say yes i've read through this and i understand yep. and i agree to the eternal this consequences this, this of this, this decision this is the statement that i'm yep. making to the church yep and then the thing just prints out a letter and sends it to the church office building well, for you here's the or thing is email maybe my 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 husband just resigned okay and he did all via email oh wow so it, it, there was a yeah. little there was a little misfire because Sorry to get into the Mormon weeds because he didn't. He thought you could just send it to the membership department, uh-huh. but it actually has to go to the bishop of the area you live in. <laughs> but that's simple because the church has uh, on their website. You put in your zip code, and it tells you who your bishop is and how to contact them. See, so the app I, could just do that. You put in your zip code. Da, da, da. See. That's that's their old tactic of you have to go through. This is an ecclesiastical issue, and yes. you have to blah blah blah. Um, and they tried that with me, mm-hmm. and I sent them a letter direct, like immediately, boom, back to the same person who just sent me. This is an ecclesiastical issue, 
And I said, no, 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 no. You didn't read my letter. I understand my rights. I don't have to like search out any specific person. I've sent this to the church office building, to your record office. Mm. That's enough. I am no I am no longer a member because I have said I'm no longer a member. So all I want you to do is to now acknowledge that I'm no longer a member. Confirmation. That's all I'm asking. Did, for. And did you get confirmation? And I got a confirmation letter. <sighs> See? So you don't have to go through the little they 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 want they want to send you through their little their little circuitous route yeah. just so that you have to interact with the bishop who is supposed to like who knows your family yeah, maybe who yeah. might guilt you into mm-hmm. or or yeah sweet no, little no, no, no. threats no what, do you want you, to break your mother's heart <laughs> is that what you what well, that's fine if you want to do that. i mean your soul is your soul but yeah. your mother's heart is all she has <laughs> okay it's a southern bishop. I, I I wish that's how they went about it. It's they're they're far more. So somebody out there, more. please make this app yeah. and yeah. and Frank and Dan have pledged considerable funds. <laughs> to <laughs> please, it, it would take us having considerable <laughs> funds for us to pledge those funds. So I think this is a great story, and please no, please somebody wonderful. think about that. <clears throat> yeah, that's great. Thank you mm-hmm. for sharing. Um, all right, I, I've got a lot of Mormon going on. Uh, it's another very Mormon show, guys. Yeah. Strap in. Sorry. Uh, so it was uh, it was General Conference uh, not too long ago. Mm. Uh, for those of you who do not know what General Conference is, it's uh, the the twice yearly um, big fancy meeting of all the the higher ups. They're all they all gather. In the uh, the Sunday, Sunday, center. Sunday, <laughs> the monsters of boredom return <laughs> to the supernacle in downtown Salt Lake. <laughs> they, they, they speechify to the world. Holy smokes, and, do they speechify? Uh, <coughs> and they, uh, yeah, and they, they bore everyone to tears. There's a lot of it's talking. Just, um, it's just these old men, old men, barely able to get up to the podium. Yeah, half of them, and uh, and they, with their with their eyes they can barely hold open anymore um look into that camera and try to guilt you into yeah being a good mormon mm. anywho uh one of the speakers this go around uh by his name is devin durant and he what? he's the first counselor in the lds um sunday school general presidency so I mean, what that means isn't that important. What's it, what is important is that he's in the presidency of a church auxiliary for the whole church. Okay. And, uh, he, all throughout this talk he was giving, he kept using a word that isn't really a word, uh, ponderize. He says, and this is, this is the way, this is a method, according to him, for learning verses from from scripture for memorizing them right mm. uh, specifically it, it supposedly it works really well with the book of mormon uh and but he's 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 combining the words ponder and memorize and so he has this whole theory that, oh you know, i see what he did there yeah isn't that clever ponderize. Ooh, fancy that through, that through pondering the scripture <laughs> For many times a day, for a week or so, oh, God. you will memorize it and it will, and quote, you will feel an increase in spirituality. You will also be able to teach and lift those you love in more meaningful ways. Okay. Well, immediately following his talk, um, <clears throat> the uh, social media, I guess, blew up. Mm-hmm. Um, more, Mormons, someone, someone noticed that there's a website out there called ponderize.us and they were selling t-shirts for 17.99 and rubber wristbands for 2.99 emblazoned with the words what's your verse okay yeah and he i guess apparently he said that a lot during his address well okay channel two here in town uh they reported on it first i guess and uh they f- they found out that the site had been set up by Durant's son and daughter-in-law Yeah, <clears throat> a week prior <laughs> to the talk being given. Hmm, that is curious timing. Yeah. Uh, That's a bit of luck. So people have been denouncing it as 
priestcraft, which is, of course, a Joseph Smith-ism, mm. uh, for uh, profiting off of being um, a religious uh, leader, uh-huh. and uh, which, of course, is, is seriously denounced in Mormonism. Um, so folks like, uh, like we'll be hearing from Mr. Uh, Jim Baker here in a minute, <laughs> who, uh, you know, preaches in order to priestcraft to, to sell some stuff, to make money. That's priestcraft. Yeah. Uh, and, and really, really, really bad thing in Mormonism. Yeah. Joseph so, Smith hated it, hated, hated it, hated and it. And then, but promptly set up a right. organization. Well, well he hated competition. It, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, anywho, um, this is an amazing, uh, it's one little quote that the Tribune uh, called together. This is the one that I like the best of someone from uh, who posted online. Her name was Julie Tucker Shaw. Um, and she said, regardless of whether the family will profit from it, we can say we know it was a good idea supported by the prophet and suggested in general conference. The original idea is wonderful and inspired. It should be supported. <laughs> like, oh, that, like, no, uh, they were looking to get rich off of your gullibility, sweetheart. Well, I have to say, you know, I work in the entertainment business and there's always, you know, everybody knows what product placement is, right? Yeah, and yeah. and trying to push your product through yeah. movies and the media and whatever. And I have to say, this is the what general conference? Hundred and... 186. 186. And this is the first time they've done product placement. <laughs> Like this huge business conglomerate dressed up in a bad suit as a religion. And this is the first time they've been like, yeah, hey, go to this website. Yeah. I'm, 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 I'm less amazed by the fact that they did this and more amazed by the fact that it but took this, this the long. first time. Yeah. Well, I mean, I would think that there have been plenty of books sold. Yeah. By speeches. You know, in general. Conference. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone getting a little bit of, you know, because as soon as they are up at that podium, let's say they're sort of a, a lower ranking member of the, the 70, mm -hmm. right? Which is a governing body of the church, but not a famous one. You mm -hmm. don't really know who all the 70 are. Uh, but let's say you get you get tapped to give a little talk. Um, now, all of a sudden, you have all this like you're, you have FaceTime in front of the entire church. Mm -hmm. uh, and then your talk gets printed into the enzyme. Yeah. Magazine, right? Which is a, a monthly church publication. And uh, and so now you have a little bit of, of fame with which that you could easily probably sell a book. Right. You know, like you, you've you, you, you could get your book into a desert news now or a desert news, a desert book. Yeah. And uh, and then uh, sell 50,000 copies. Yeah, so, and then, you know, pay for the pay off your mortgage or. Right. You know, do whatever. Get a bigger trailer. Bigger. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> if if you're a minor yeah. seventy, you probably live in a you trailer. Know, start a start a um, you know, multi level marketing company, in right? <laughs> in, in your ward, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I think it's true. It's like when a when a you know a, a junior politician with some promise is given a speaking spot at the national convention. Yeah, you know that's yeah. their moment, and so they better have they better have their biography or whatever kind of lined up. Yeah. Because that's their spotlight. Yeah. And this guy had that. Yeah. It's just he did it with T-shirts and wristbands. <laughs> it's just so, you know, it's it's so, it's surprisingly crass, even for kind of the Mormon business model. It's just yeah. a little shabby, isn't it? it, it no, it really, really is. Uh, he ends up uh, publicly apologizing. The site is now down, um, <laughs> which is too bad. Um, I, uh, immediately after the, 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 the um, backlash started they uh they reduced the prices down to basically just cover their cost oh and well then, that's and then they were like oh no but if we say that it's all going into the general mission fund then we can raise the prices back up to what they what they're supposed to be and so then they raised the prices up after they had lowered the prices i want to know if they <laughs> sold any i do too but that's what i would clearly like. a lot of what went into this was thought <laughs> um, and also, you know, just a little aside for all my our, our Mormon brothers and sisters out there, you got to wonder if the, the wristbands were actually the ones that you flick when oh. you're thinking about that, you know. <laughs> and by what give, do you, what giving do you yourself the rub, <laughs> look it up. Who was it? That, was it Boyd K. Packer that said put a uh, uh, an elastic around your oh, wrist and yeah. flick it? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. 
So if you see see some kid at conference just madly flicking that what's your verse bracelet, you know what's happening. Well, I think this thing has fallen from grace. As quickly as it as it had risen to like potentially be like a thing, people were going to be talking about ponderize. All they had to do was wait six months. Totally. If they had just waited six months and then had been like, you know what? The, this is popular. Pop, it's popular. People, yeah. it's, it resonated. Let's sell some T-shirts. And you know what? Nobody would have cared. Nobody would have cared. But no. the fact that they they bought that site a week before conference, shame. Sick. Shame. Well, what, what surprises me is that uh, ponderize.com must have already been taken. Because right. <laughs> they had to go with the So it's not US. even his word. No. Oh, what a <laughs> bastard. But I do, wouldn't it be great if the next conference you see like the, the whoever the next prophet is, because this one isn't going to be at the next conference, shambles up to the podium with like a giant Mountain Dew <laughs> or like <laughs> eats a Twix. <laughs> hmm, this is refreshing. <laughs> that would be so awesome. All right. Shall I continue? Yes, please. So, sorry, keeping things a little close to home. Oh, no. Uh, Jason Chaffetz. Gugh. Ugh, gugh. He's, he's kind of... Uh, he's kind of an asshole without the ability to expel anything useful. <laughs> um, so, this is from Farangula, our friend PZ Myers. Have you read PZ Myers on the show? No. Yeah, PZ Myers is a great, great atheist. Oh. Um, but he used to be a professor here. At the University of Utah. Oh, really? And yeah, now he's a big deal a professor someplace else. He's a he's a evolu- I think he's an evolutionary biologist oh, okay. sort of guy. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, so anyway, J- he's he, his Utah connection makes him like us particularly hate Jason Chaffetz's <laughs> stupid circus behavior. <laughs> So, uh, as a lot of listeners are probably aware, this dope tried to shame Cecile Richards who, if you don't know, is the daughter of Ann Richards, former mm. governor of Texas, mm-hmm. who was a force to be reckoned with. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. um, Cecile seems to have some of her mom's grit. Okay. Um, and she has to because she's the head of this organization that's constantly under attack from from uh, Planned Parenthood, uh, uh-huh. constantly under attack from people. So um, Jason Chaffetz was the chairman of this hearing where he attacked Cecile Richards over these completely doctored bullshit videos that right. you know say that uh, this is this massive baby harvesting organization and, and so he, because he's an idiot he started his his opening statement at the hearing by kind of getting weepy he bore his testimony and got a little weepy oh god that his parents both died of cancer now i'm not saying he was wrong he's wrong to be sad about his parents dying of cancer for god's sake but right. He used that awful personal anecdote to try to say that there's not enough money for cancer research. So what what should happen is that Planned Parenthood should be defunded. <laughs> the money redirected. So the only place, he here said. he is, a powerful, for reasons that are baffling, here he is, a powerful congressman right. in the big boy Congress of America. Right. Um, be, uh, and the only place he can go hunting with his little gathering basket for monies to save people from cancer, including his parents, well, he can't save them anymore, is from Planned Parenthood. Not from the Pentagon. Right. Not from, you know, subsidies to oil companies. You couldn't, we couldn't, you know, raise taxes. Like, no. And And furthermore, he wants to take money for cancer research from an organization who's one of their largest, one, one of the things they do the most is cancer screening. Right. <laughs> and probably prevent, I've seen this statistic somewhere, how many, how many cancers, uh, how many uh, fatal cancer issues they prevent a year. It's insane. Right. right. You know, um, so fuck that guy. Uh, yeah. That's kind of all I have to say. And, and then he further embarrassed himself with this chart. Oh, did you see a the chart? I yeah, I don't have chart. it. I don't have it in front of me. Should, oh no! It is the most hilarious chart, and he said he got it from some uh, Planned Parenthood site or some of their materials. Well, it had an x-axis along the bottom. It was basically to say cancer screenings have gone down, Planned Parenthood, and abortions have skyrocketed. And there was like years along the bottom on uh-huh. the x-axis. There was no y-axis. 
So there's nothing. <laughs> Even John Oliver did a thing on this because he found it so absurd. And he said he got it from Planned Parenthood. And then Cecile Richards is like, oh, actually, if you look at the lower right corner, you can see it came from this anti-abortion group. Basically, you forgot to Photoshop. Out the crap. Oh, yeah. no. So Jason oh. Chaffetz, take Nitwit. a long walk off a short pier and oh, go away. Oh, God, yeah. What? Yeah. All right. Well, also a local story. Oh. Uh so BYU, I guess, has this annual um, little conference that they host. For those of you who don't know what BYU oh, yeah. is, it's a it's a Mormon semi professional football team with a small school attached to it. <laughs> Brigham Young University, yeah, uh, down in Provo, Utah, and uh, they have uh, for twenty two years now hosted um, an international law and religion sympo- symposium at their law school. Hmm. Uh, and, uh, they're this year, they're really looking at, uh, freedom of religion. Um, and, uh, as, as one of the big topics that they're going to be talking about. And so a group by the name of free BYU, uh, it's a group of former students and others, I suppose, uh, who are, they're, they're, they're trying to enact some change at BYU uh, by getting BYU to start allowing students to show their ankles mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to be able to leave the church and stay at the school right because BYU sort of they have this honor code thing and part of it is uh, if you're Mormon and decide to no longer be Mormon you get kicked out you violated right. the honor code, and any honor code violation of a certain size, you're just gone, right? Yeah. Uh, the, That's a the, big one. That's yeah. a big violation. That's a big violation. Yeah. They're perfectly fine if you're Baptist and you decide to be Mormon. Right. Uh, but if you if you decide to leave Mormonism and go do anything else, no. Nope, 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 nope. Yeah. Now, um, clearly, uh, well, one thing that BYU does, if you're Mormon, your tuition is uh, lower than if you're not Mormon. It's half, right? It's half, yeah. yeah. Uh, full Which time. begs the question, why the fuck would you go there if you weren't Mormon? Well, it's I still get, pretty cheap. I get I get harassed by religious fanatics, and I get to pay <laughs> twice as much? Well, Boy, um, howdy. More, uh, full, um, LDS uh, undergraduates pay about $2,500 a semester. Wow. And so the non-Mormon undergrads pay 5000 a semester. That's pretty cheap, yeah. It's cheap. Yeah. That's that's it's really 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 cheap. And their justification for that is that LDS families um are paying tithing, which does go to support BYU uh and, and the mall. And and the mall downtown. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's true. All, both very important <laughs> yes. institutions in Utah. Uh well, anyway, a uh, speaker has uh publicly canceled his uh his his attendance of uh he canceled his talk at hmm. BYU. Um, he had been invited and agreed to go. At this symposium? At the symposium. Yep. And when he became aware of this this policy, um, he was like, well, wait a second. This is a freedom of religion symposium, <laughs> and you're limiting freedom of religion on your campus? Absolutely. Like, okay, I don't want any part of that. Um, Good for him. Yeah. And so he's he walked. Um, and, like uh, the pioneer children, <laughs> he walked and walked and walked. Uh, there was, uh, so one of the, the, the group spokesmen for free BYU who they're, they're actually very involved in, in getting this to happen. Uh, apparently they got a list of all the, the potential speakers and they sent them letters explaining why they should not be speaking at a freedom of religion, uh, symposium oh. at BYU. And is he the only He's one, the only one who, who responded by, uh, canceling his talk. I think they don't know what freedom means. <laughs> or it doesn't mean what you think it means. <laughs> um, so the, the spokesman for the Free BYU group said, it's kind of a non sequitur uh, to be a proponent of religious freedom and, say, uh, and then to deny it to your students. Um, and then um, a, a spokesperson for uh, the BYU Law School says, what can I say? We respect his uh, point of view in reference to this uh, prof- uh, professor from uh, 
uh, da, 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 da. Yeah, I mean, Jur- Jurgens Meyer is the last name of the guy who was supposed to come and talk. Where does it say? I think it's a made up name. <laughs> Mark Jurgens Meyer, uh, who is the he's a sociology professor at University of California, Santa Barbara. Uh, and he's also the director of the Orphelia Center for Global and International Studies. Um, anywho, um, BYU said, what can I say? Uh, we respect his point of view. We support the right of all individuals to honor their conscience. No, you don't. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Liar. If you did, he'd be speaking at your stupid <laughs> fucking symposium. <laughs> Liar. <laughs> Uh, so, and then the uh, spokesperson continued um, by explaining that religious freedom extends to faith-based institutions, so they, uh, which, you know, have the right to determine membership requirements. And that's absolutely true. It is true. But there's, there's that, and then there's being an asshole. Well, there's that, and yeah, being a hypocrite. About and being the, a hypocrite. On, on the topic. Right. You know, if you embrace freedom of religion yeah. and you promote it so much but that you're having a symp- whole symposium about it yeah no you're not you're 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 not for it you're for enshrining your privilege your religious privilege uh to go about and be dicks to right people and but that's what that's what you want the the freedom to do not people being and the whole thing is just religion. indicative of of the opposite of what a university is supposed to be oh, absolutely completely the opposite be, be, education is you learn how to learn and you you figure out how to come to conclusions on your own yeah yeah you yeah. know what's the point of okay i'm going into university to learn something and when i come out the other end oh i didn't even need to go right i should have just whatever my parents told me that i believed when i was 17 Right. I could have skipped these four years and this $2,500 a semester of tuition and right. just gone to work at New Skin and I'd be fine. Yeah. 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 Why waste all the time and money at a university if you're not going to be challenged and if it's not going to, you know, push the envelope of what you understand and what you believe? Right. Well, you have kind of a liberal arts uh, understanding of of the whole thing well i dropped then, out of university so. <laughs> <laughs> but not not because of my religion right yeah but um, or lack yeah i mean there's definitely a push to uh i don't know that people care about that in the same way even at the, at, at, at the university of utah i mean they you know protect freedom of expression and whatnot on, on campus of course but um you know the arts are underfunded and it's yeah. just about the sciences it's just about the hard you know the hard sciences, which is great. You know we do need engineers, and but we shouldn't be ignoring the arts. You know, the, the liberal arts as, as yeah, well. It's, and it seems like I think if I understand BYU enough, the emphasis is really kind of on. And they have a law school that's apparently quite good. Yeah, um, I've heard that. But I think the emphasis really is kind of on creating just middle management cogs. Yeah. Right. It's oh, just every, kind of business uh-huh. school, uh-huh. English I, major. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I started out at BYU. And oh, that's right. Did you go for a year? I went for a year and a half. Ugh. And I started up, I had just started taking classes in, in the film program down there, which they have churn out people who can work on a crew, Yeah, you know, uh, which says a lot more, <laughs> says a lot more for them than it does for the program that I ended up going to at the University of Utah, mm. where they don't really turn out people who go out and work on a lot of crews. Mm -hmm. Um, they have very different focuses as, as film programs. Um, but, um, there was in any sort of class that you would expect it to normally have more of that humanities bent. They always had like this practical, like, well, this is how you go and get a job more vocational doing this. Yeah. You know, um, way more vocational absolutely whereas some at a liberal arts school you get into a film program and it's you know you show up your first day on in the real world on set as a pa and you yeah. want to talk about fellini and like the italian new wave and they're right. like what the fuck go <laughs> yeah. get me coffee shut up <laughs> yeah. child yeah you know and i i learned how to 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 edit and to set up you know lights and all that kind of stuff but it never was in never presented in how do you work inside that crew Hmm. Right, never any sense of that. Well, go go BYU, I guess. From in 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 that respect, yeah. you know, I mean, and so there's there's an argument 
for for being more vocational, I guess. But anyway, I feel like I've but not totally for throwing straight. people out of school. Not for throwing people out of school. Yeah, because they don't believe the right thing. Yeah, um, or they're not potentially fresh meat for the missionaries. Right. Because I mean that's that's why they allow in non-members, or, so that they can well, convert them, and so they can play on their football team. And so, <laughs> honestly, no, right? That's more so than anything. Yeah, yeah. No, that's true. All oh, those poor guys. Ugh. They show up. They're going out to have their... And they get a big, you know, they probably get huge scholarships. Yeah. And they're going to school for free. And then yeah. a week into it, they're like, oh, please, God. What did I do? <laughs> Blow my brains out. I'm going to paint the ceiling of the cougar eat with my brains. Oh, that's dark. Yeah. Remember the cougar eat? <laughs> I do remember the yeah. cougar eat. It's, now, it's no longer what it was. Oh. Do you, know, do you remember the old Dude, cougar eat? I haven't been down there for... 20 years oh well now it's a taco bell and a kfc and oh <laughs> just like conference they're monetizing it uh-huh. yeah. Fuck. anyway there's um, nothing sacred you're all done right yep okay well if you'd like to uh uh join in on the conversation uh you can always do so by sending us an email podcast at thank god i'm atheist.com is the email address you can also uh leave a voicemail message for us we'll be playing a few of those later on uh, and uh, the phone number for that is 424-666-8442. We love it when you join us on Facebook, facebook.com slash Atheist is how you can find us. Uh, there's always a vibrant uh, conversation going on there. Mackenzie uh, posts like mad um, and uh, does just a wonderful job keeping uh, the community in line as much as she can. Um, and then there's also the TGIA TGIA members only lounge now you have to search for that on facebook and then request to join it it is a closed group but it's also become a vibrant community they're doing uh amas uh over there i i've i've been checking in and seeing what's going on but they have people in the community that they're like they're doing their own little like on reddit they have the ask me anything oh, oh right an ama yeah and uh, i thought it was the american music awards i'm like wow that's <laughs> over wow at the uh, hosted by the TGI congratulations Lounge. yeah taylor swift we've arrived yeah <laughs> no uh ask me anything and uh and they, they, they've had people step forward and they're just just a wild conversation always going on so that's that's wonderful uh and if you'd like to check that out you can do that on facebook all right we're gonna take a quick break um and we're gonna listen to uh this is jim baker you guys remember Jim Baker, right? Jim Baker. Jim and Tammy Faye. Yeah. He's not with uh, Tammy Faye anymore. Uh, now it's a woman uh, who... Uh, is less... Uh, far painted. less interesting to look at. Less painted. Lori Baker is her name. Um, she's less painted, but boy, she's got the hair. Mm-hmm. Big blonde <laughs> helmet of a... Of a the higher the hair, the closer to God. <laughs> All right. Uh, and he's, he's talking about, um, I guess, what sort of um, motivates his, his clothing choices. Hmm. Think about what FDR did. That was brilliant. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever watched any of the history on all of that, but it was brilliant how he did, you know, back in the day when it was just radio, they would, what, gather around the radio, the whole family. That's what I'm waiting for our leaders to the do. The president would say. That's right. That's what I'm waiting for our leaders. They need to talk to us yes. from their hearts. Yes. What happened to the heart, America? Where is America's heart? I got went to get dressed and and god i pray about what i wear i really do i know i look stupid sometimes <laughs> but I, the, the last time god told me to wear a, a color was red right i remember and what well. happened that day the stock market crashed a Going few days ago the, oh, that's right red. remember that yes and today god said i want you to wear all black even my shoes are black i know my underwear is black oh my, my gosh s- that too my socks they, okay, are black the kids call that tmi no, too much no, information. no it is not too much information because when god <laughs> says get the sin out he meant get the sin out yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good when you took over your enemy you were to destroy the every part of the enemy oh boy that's true Wow, and I'm in I, I I'm in a mourning because people aren't ready 
<laughs> Maybe that wasn't the best choice. Th- did it make any sense to you? What the fuck was he shouting about? <laughs> That's what our leaders need to do. Oh. Just putting an addled old man on television and telling yeah. him he's got to move 800 units of cornmeal. Yeah, you were telling me about that. I, I wasn't fully aware that that's what he's up to. Yeah, this is his whole... This is uh, So he Pat went to jail... No, what, not Pat. Uh, Jim. Jim went yeah. to jail for, oh God, like all kinds of fraud and financial shenanigans, right? Right, yeah, yeah. As you do when you're a televangelist. If, if, if y'all are millennials and you don't remember the 80s, uh, <laughs> basically everybody who went on TV and talked about God ended up in jail. <laughs> Um, and it's true. They were all just, it was this crazy racket. Yeah. And, well, uh, he, he and his wife, Tammy Faye, they were building Bible land, right? Yeah. They were building a massive amusement park, <laughs> Bible themed. What's more fun than the Bible? Yeah. You don't want to go to that, that godless Disneyland. No. So they, they, so he went to jail. Tammy Faye, who was actually a very interesting person died. And, uh, so now Jim's back. Yeah. And he's he looks old as shit. Yeah. And uh, now he's just kind of has that John McCain shouting at people to get off his lawn kind of vibe. <laughs> and and what he's doing is he's pushing this, you know, it's the end of the world. It's coming any minute now. Right. And so he's pushing this glop, like this survival glop. Right. And uh, like it's five gallon buckets. Apparently it's five gallon buckets of oat slurry and corn pulp and, you know... <laughs> Wheat sludge, like uh, so, you survive God's wrath, and then you just and then get, you to, just get yeah. to gorge yourself on on ground magazine for the rest of your life. <laughs> Reconstituted magazine. At a certain point, there's no if that's if that's what it's going to take to survive. I don't know, really. Fuck, I just want to die. Yeah, instantly. Uh, yeah, if Marie Callender's is gone, <laughs> I don't want to live. <laughs> So that's kind of what he's doing is he, he's trying to just it, it doesn't even make sense in what he's saying here because he's talking about the last time God told him to wear red. And then they show a they, picture of well, him. They show him. In, yeah. In a December 11th, 2000 something or other. Straight up. I mean, they were just like, this is for real, folks. Yeah. He really did it. And now Let he's talking about I can scroll back. Yeah. Friday, August 21st, the Dow plummeted 531 points. Concluding its worst week since 2011. That's what it says on screen. <laughs> Under this little inset video of him dressed like, uh, I don't even know what he's dressed like. Well, with that red red suit. Co- I mean, bright red. Like at a Christmas party. Yeah, yeah. With a white shirt and a black tie. I mean, he looks like he's a realtor from like way back when. Yeah, from Terre Haute, Indiana. <laughs> and so so the stock market crashed because he wore a red blazer. And now he's he's he looks like... He kind of looks like Janet Jackson, you know, circa 1994, <laughs> where, right? He's in all black with a black kind Double of Russell, Russell Simmons hat with yeah. a cross on it. Uh-huh. And I don't know what that look is, but apparently the, the, the rug matches the drapes because he's wearing black underwear <laughs> and a, you know, a merry widow or something. Uh, and well, Lori sitting there, his wife, yeah. she is just as embarrassed as can be that he is talking about his underwear. <laughs> It is just like, oh my God, Jim. Well, thank God nobody's listening. <laughs> and, listening. I know she does this great gesture when she's talking about, back when it was just on the radio, <laughs> like like a mime at a child, like afternoon children's show. What's radio? Um, and so, and then there's the audience at these weird banquet tables. And I they, don't get what's going it on. It looks like a cooking show, doesn't it? it and oh, it, we're all going to get. It looks like he should be selling a some new Jim Baker blender, right? That's exactly what it, it looks like. It looks like, like a infomercial. Infomercial, thank you. Um, but it, but with lower production value and more shouting. But it is an infomercial for his slurry. Yeah, for his slurry. <laughs> because, exactly. no, on the screen it says, ta- tasty new foods uh, <laughs> offer. One year of food for two for $1,100. Almost no word in that sentence is true tasty new food <laughs> yeah and apparently it's like i heard somebody talking about this i think i heard uh tom and cecil talking about this because they went after him for a while and uh-huh. and it's some survival kit 
that really you could go out and buy all this junk, like uh -huh. a glow stick and a whistle or something, right? For two hundred bucks total, and he's selling it for eleven hundred dollars. And these, you know, well, I mean, <sighs> look, it's the end of the world. The you don't have time yeah. to go shopping. He <laughs> And he needs to fund his life. I mean, come on. It's Jim Baker doesn't have inexpensive tastes. No, black underwear is kind of is is uh expensive <laughs> and sexy. Is it? Yeah. yeah. Oh, let's see what I'm wearing. Yeah. Gray. I'm gray. wearing gray underwear right yeah. now. That's a good choice. It used to be white. Okay. Um so poor Jim. Poor Jim. But if you have a if you've got a a, a hankering for some sloppy gloppy cornmeal <laughs> You can hit him up. <laughs> All right. Well, why don't we move on? Uh, as promised last week, we're uh, doing voicemails uh, instead of emails this week. Uh, this is because Dan's out of town. And so we normally split up the duties and... Uh, and I don't do any of that. <laughs> I guess I could have I, I could I, have assigned this to you. I could have, but then I'd be inside your matrix and I'd have the keys <laughs> to the TGIA kingdom. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to listen to a few voicemails. Um, uh, this first one is uh, um, it's a question, a listener asking a question um, about how to talk to their family about some some stuff that's coming up. So let's just uh, listen into that one. Hey, Frank and Dan, uh, fan of the show. Um, I have a problem that I would love it if you uh, discuss on your show if possible. Um, so I just listened to your podcast about the World Congress of Families, and I did a post on your group and also my Facebook wall uh, and interrupted. Um, and so my question is, what do I do when people think, oh, World Congress of Families, my, you know, my Mormon friends are, you know, supporting that group and the Mormon leaders are attending that and now think I'm a horrible person because I must be calling them uh, hateful because I say the World Congress of Families is a hateful group. So I don't know how to do that because a lot of these people are people I love and think are good. But how do I, I don't know, I don't know how to not offend them and maybe there's no way to not offend them. So cool. If you could discuss that, that'd be great. Hopefully I articulated that well. Thanks guys. Bye. I think that's a great question, actually. That's a that's that, an important question. It's an important question, I think, that goes goes kind of to deeper issues about how you, as an atheist or someone who's wanting to challenge belief or the dangers of mm -hmm. things like the world, how you have those conversations with people of faith in yeah. your life, especially if they're Mormons, which is our experience. Right. And I think it also, uh, for me, it brings up um, well, let, let's, let's talk about that first and then we'll, uh, maybe we'll get to what it brought up for me okay. in that conversation. Um, yeah. How, like talking to your family, like, first of all, I think it's choice of forum for a lot of these things. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I think when, um, I think fa posting on Facebook about subjects that, you know, people might be sensitive about and Mormons, let's face it are a very sensitive bunch. They're so ready to, to uh, play the persecution card. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and so, I don't know. If this is something that you feel like you need to be talking about with your, your nearest and dearest who happen to be Mormon, um, I would take it offline, personally. Yeah, I, I'm not... On, and for reasons very much like this, or partially like this, I've never even been on Facebook I've, because all I know is the never agony... Ever? I have never had a Facebook page. What? And even my dear husband, who is a very social person and, and likes to keep in touch with all kinds of people, got off of it. Oh, I, I, desp I despise it. He deleted you his know, Facebook page really. a couple years ago. And, and I have uh, a very hard time with it. And I, I know that we have the Members Only Lounge and, and that kind of stuff on Facebook. I'm sure people who go to the Members Only Lounge, I mean, for a while there, they would have like Frank sightings, right? Like I would like like something and then everybody was like frank is here frank oh. is here. and it's like yeah because i never ever go i thought you meant people who followed you around town <laughs> oh no that would be terrifying uh no i, I mean like on well, the members only line. you're salt lake famous not really um, um so yeah i think that from my experience with with my brother who does a lot of political stuff on on 
uh, Facebook, uh-huh. you know, and, and he's, he's, he's a combative type and he kind of likes getting into that, but that's what happens is it gets a lot of times it gets into these just flame wars and then devolves into just a bunch of shit. So my take is that the call, the reason the caller called in mm-hmm. is because she's earnestly asking the question, you know, she doesn't want to just, it sounds like she doesn't want to just throw a grenade. Right. Like she's like, I feel like I, it's incumbent on me to help change somebody's mind about this. Right. So I think you're right. Facebook, I don't you, know anybody changes their mind on Facebook. No, it, it just doesn't, doesn't happen. Right. Um, and then, you know, if you do take it offline and, and you're having these conversations, um, just, just be mindful of who you're talking to. And, uh, you know, like Mormon, again, just going back to the, my, my previous point. They're they're a really sensitive bunch. And they're, the second they feel, and they have very sensitive antenna because they f- they have such an overdeveloped sense of persecution. Mm-hmm. So the minute anything, true believing Mormons, especially older ones, the minute anything comes into their you know view that looks a little bit uh, anti, yeah, or not totally in favor of Mormonism, they're on a hair trigger. Yeah, they're just and and, and that's it. They shut down. They're yep. not going to hear anything you have to say. Um, and so I, I think it's really the, the, the way the, the approach that I have developed, and it's a little disingenuous maybe, <laughs> um, but it seems to work with, with my Mormon family, um, which is, I'm just confused. I'm just sort of baffled by, oh. by something that's going on in the world. And I, I just don't understand. And uh, so basically I just ask all these like big hypothetical questions about whatever issue it is. So like with this. You know, it could be, you know, I heard that this group is coming to Salt Lake and... What do you know about these yeah, guys? Yeah, what do you know about them? It's and, the Socratic method. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. And you just ask a lot of questions and, and just, you know, feign <laughs> sincerity. <laughs> well, we're, we're going to get to feigning sincerity because we're going to talk about conference in a minute here. But. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, you, you, you just don't feign sincerity. Be, be real about it. But like just kind of guide a conversation. And that's, that's what I have found has been the most productive. And you can tell when you've reached that, th- their barrier, right? Yeah. That, that, that line where they start to get really sensitive. But with my sister, I surprisingly have had a couple conversations where I'm just like, huh, I don't know quite where she is. I mean, I know she mm. goes to church every Sunday. Mm-hmm. I know she's a firm believer. Her kids, she, really raised her kids to be believers is she older than you uh-huh yeah and but at times i hear her say things um that i'm just like huh she's not i don't think she's a total sheep you know right. i don't think she's just blindly following uh i think she's she may have wrestled with some stuff in her life and and, and she's just fe- she's just kind of settled in and okay well this is what i do i'm mormon and whatnot but i don't really buy it all yeah right um I don't know. I can't figure out with, with her. My parents, I know exactly where they are. And they're just like hook, line, and sinker right. Mormons. Right. They'll, they will follow the prophet no matter. Are they the kind of people who've never read a book that w- they didn't buy a Deseret book or read, cause... A, read a book? <laughs> <laughs> well, the Book of Mormon is a book. <laughs> Uh, I don't know. <laughs> uh, you know, I'm kind of, of, of two minds because I've been on this jag recently where I feel like living here in Salt Lake and being an unbeliever and, and being fairly outspoken about it, I feel like we shouldn't code switch. We shouldn't, you know, automatically dumb down and edit ourselves to the point of just vanilla pablum when we're talking to a believer mm. because that, that, that puts hot air into their balloon, into their fantasy, right? Right. But I think the caller and I might be coming from different perspectives. It sounds like what she really wants to do is help change some minds. Right. So if that's what you want to do, I think you have to, you have to approach it the way Frank was talking about and find some kind of Socratic questioning, answering questions with questions, uh-huh. um, throwing out little cues like, you know, they're pushing this thing in Uganda or, you know, they're doing this thing in Russia. Yeah. Um, did you hear about this? Because you're and not to sound terribly too terribly condescending, but you're talking to someone with a philosophical handicap. Mm. So you have to address mm. that handicap when you're speaking to them. Mm. Right. Yeah. And the hope is one day they'll it, it's a handicap you can choose not to have. 
you mm. can be cured of it rather easily. Yeah. But as long as the persecution, as long as they, you keep fueling a sense of persecution, they're going to, they're going to double down and double down and double down. Yeah. That's all I'd say. No. Yeah. I agree. Yeah. All right. I think, I think that's, hopefully that gets you on, on the right path. Yeah. Um, w- w- with your question. All right. Uh, the next one, I, I just love this one. This is a, a caller who has made a discovery in his life and I, I think it's great. Hey guys, just wanted to let you know, I, uh, I have been a closet atheist for quite a while. I continued to go to church just because I felt that it was the right thing to do. However, now I am fully accepting my lack of belief. And come to find out, my wife was in the same position. Once I came out, it's actually made us closer. I feel much better, uh, my wife and I. I believe have a closer relationship now that we're both on the same page and now that we're both honest with ourselves and listening to this podcast helped me understand that not everyone who is an atheist is a Satan worshiper. So thanks again. This is Joe from Fort Wayne. Well, thank you, Joe. Yay for Joe. Yeah, uh, you, you've had a wonderful breakthrough in your life. I mean, Yay for Mr. And Mrs. Joe. <laughs> no, I think it's amazing. Yeah. Well, well done, Joe. Um, I wonder what else your wife and you agree on that you don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that's such a great story. And, yeah. and, and it's good that your podcast did something good for somebody. Oh, well, <clears throat> uh, we try. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> it surprises me every time we ever hear anything. That's like so that. great. <laughs> and it does beg the question, what, what did you guys talk about before, Joe? Like, how long have you been married? How long were you, were yeah. you both kind of... Peeking out of your respective closets at the common ground. And how how many terrible Christian movies did you both sit through needlessly? How many hours of whatever <laughs> church? If you're in Fort Wayne, I, I'm terrified to know what church you went to. But <laughs> Right? Like, how many yeah. hours? What a great story. I, I love it. I, I, I'm, congratulations. Yes. You guys are... What a wonderful discovery to make about each other. Yeah. So, that, that's wonderful. Hail Satan. <laughs> and then uh, our last voicemail. Uh, this is, uh, so, you know, we've had this, uh, these ongoing questions about, um, Patreon and some, just some technical, uh, issues with our switch from Joyride, uh, to Patreon. When we switched from Joyride, we, I didn't even realize this. Apparently there was some sort of, um, uh, uh, podcast player on Joyride and it caused some confusion. Uh, and so here's a listener just making a, a point that should have should have been obvious, but I guess just wasn't. Hi, Frank and Dan, or possible other guests that isn't Frank and Dan. I wanted to say thank you for finally moving to Patreon. I have a billion things that I support on Patreon, and finally your show can be one of them because you've been on Joyride or whatever, and it's just a thing I didn't want to deal with. Um, I wanted to say there was like a little confusion on apps and how to use, uh, listen to the show and all that kind of stuff on different devices. And, uh, perhaps I could clear a little bit of it up. I mean, you don't really have to have any sort of special, uh, specific app to find the show. I use an app called Pocket Cast and it aggregates, uh, any podcast that's on the, uh, iTunes library store thing. And that's on an Android device. Pretty much every, uh, app. Uh, on Android that listens to podcasts, that can search podcasts, can find your show. Uh, so I wouldn't worry too much about having people use a, a specific app or anything because they all do all kinds of different things. Um, maybe that clears a little bit of it up. Maybe I don't have to worry too much about it. Um, but that's how I listen to the show, and I'm sure that's how a lot of other people listen to the show. Um, congrats again on 200 episodes. Uh, thanks. Bye. Okay, well, for, can I just say uh-huh. the other guest who d- – Am I chopped liver? <laughs> I have a name. My name is Mark. Say my name. <laughs> Fucker. Oh. No, I'm kidding. Oh. I'm kidding. Um, I'm just a little stung. Oh. Yeah. Sorry, Mark. Yeah, you know my name. I know your name. Uh, no, but uh, clearly, I mean, if you're listening to the show, if you're hearing this, you've already figured out how to listen to the show. But I think it is a, a good message that you're not doing it the only way possible so if you find it in any way inconvenient the way that you're currently doing it there are other options and i think that that's my my takeaway from that one 
beside uh, or aside from the the other point which is the patreon campaign which is up and running uh it's our um it's a way that we're uh funding the show and uh uh so you can you can find the link for that on uh, our website thank and just look for the little banner that says support us on patreon or you can uh you can just go directly to our, our page on patreon which is patreon.com slash tgi atheist um we're up to last time i looked it was 114 dollars and 50 cents per episode wow. which is fantastic um and uh for that first the, the that group that helped us get to 100 uh dan once dan's back in town uh we'll put together our little reward for you guys uh which is a a private uh well not private an exclusive uh half hour episode um dan and i talking about something i don't know we haven't really figured it out yet maybe but, not maybe not mormons for once <laughs> maybe not mormons <laughs> no we'll, we'll figure out something something that's current maybe something that's being discussed on on our facebook page and uh and we'll kind of chime in with our our two cents and get that out to you guys uh we do really appreciate the support uh it is how we make the show possible and uh, we've got big plans coming up and uh uh yeah we, we just uh need your support so thanks so much to everyone who does help us out all right mark yes general conference elder mark to you <laughs> mister actually i never was an elder but you know what no i was oh you got out you got out yeah young. what's yeah. before elder priest uh, priest yeah you know. i was a priest oh okay yeah so you blessed the sacrament you bet i did wow and then i ate all that doughy goodness afterwards you didn't the throw it out for the birds <laughs> birds we ate it we made it into the little squares and no. with our dirty little Ew. deacon and teacher hands and ate it <laughs> oh well you need some sort of snack on fast sunday god do we ever <laughs> so boring. all right well general conference uh for the uninitiated it's uh a uh multiple session snooze fest that happens twice a year uh it runs on saturday and sunday there's three sessions on saturday God. two hour sessions three two hour sessions on saturday and two two hour sessions on sunday um one of the sessions on saturday is the men's session and uh i think a week they're, they're now including the women's session in general conference i think it was a week, week early a week before yeah and so the ladies get together uh, for I'm sure a couple hours because they just love the couple hour sessions. You know how they are. Holy crap! These yeah. things suck beyond belief. Do you know how many? Uh, somebody told me. I think my brother told me this yesterday. How many? Ma how many women spoke at the women's conference? Uh oh. How many? Just guess. Two. Two. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, it was men talking to the women. Of course. That is so gross. Yeah. That is. I mean, it's just. Yeah. So awful. I know. Any, I, uh, I would not want to be a Mormon I, woman. I didn't I didn't dig into the women's conference because I just I, I can only take so much sadness. So I <laughs> I stuck to the main event and it was pretty goddamn sad. <laughs> yeah. um, but anyway, the, the whole thing goes out. Um, if you if you're uh, if you're in Utah, uh, I assume probably also like Idaho and other areas with lots of Mormons, you might find it. Well, if you're in Utah, it is on the, on TV, just yeah. broadcast. Uh, it's on channel five and they, uh, do which they really, is our, do they NBC broadcast affiliate? The, I think. Yeah. Yeah. A major network. Yeah. Do they broadcast the whole thing? The whole thing. Except <sighs> for the, the, the men's, the priesthood session. Oh. That one, you have to go to like your church. Cause it's secret. And then it's, it's, uh, 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 you you either attend the the big meeting downtown or yeah you go to your local church and they'll have it up on a TV screen. That's there. what I did when I was a kid. Because yeah. boy, it, I mean, live it's amazing, you know. Wow, but <laughs> via closed circuit, it's <clears throat> also pretty terrible. <clears throat> um, I mean, I'm, I mean, you know, yeah. So anyway, um, we thought we would do. Normally, Dan and I are very un, uninterested in conference as a topic for the show. Um, because there's usually absolutely nothing that really happens. I think we've yeah. talked about it a couple times only in four years, um, beyond just acknowledging that it happened. And maybe, maybe we would have like one of, as one of our, during the first half of the show, 
as one of the stories, something that that came up that was of slight interest. Mm-hmm. But this one was was an interesting session. Uh, mainly, it, ca- it had my attention mainly because they had three apostles who had passed away uh, in the last six months, and so they had three spots of like the highest. Aside from like the president of the church and his two counselors, the highest governing body of the church, uh, the, the the twelve apostles, um, and so they were filling three of them. And there was a lot of discussion about um, and speculation about who would these men end up being. Um, we knew they'd be men. That yeah. was that was already women. Totally scratched off the list is any kind of possibility. No, no, they can't. They can never be. So, just so you guys quickly understand, this is the board of essentially this is the board of directors of the mm. faith. These are the That's a great way of putting. Yeah, it. this is the governing, the absolute governing body. These twelve guys plus the three at the top, the top. So there's this fifteen man mm-hmm. board, yeah, and they are the bosses. There's yeah. no one above them, yeah, and except that, Jesus, except and just barely, and so <laughs> because he's a Jew. Um, so they, they, they not only control the, the ecclesiastical matters, they all, the president of the church is also the CEO of all the business. Right. Uh, so this is really a board of directors anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and so clearly women are, just don't have a capacity for doing that. Um, no. and so they're not allowed. That's not what they're supposed to be doing. They're supposed to be moms and that's basically it. Right. Um, and so, but there were there was there were people starting to wonder since this since they've been really you know pounding their chests about um, uh, their sort of global reach uh, yeah. you know for the last few decades and they have they've 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 grown dramatically in South America and Mexico South Africa America, Africa Eastern Europe um, yep yep and they. Uh, and so there was some speculation, you know, are they actually going to get this governing body to reflect the the new complexion of, of the LDS church um, so that it's not just a bunch of white men? Because that's all it's been. Uh, they're one international uh, non-American uh, uh, member of, of this body is uh, Dieter Uchtdorf, uh, who... Uh, yeah, he's German. He's German. Yeah. So if he, your he, problem is you're looking too white, <laughs> don't say you're diverse because you got a German guy. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And uh, he and knows every word to Edelweiss <laughs> in two languages. Right. Yeah. Very. Yes. So it's Indeed. not that's not diversity. I'm sorry. That's not diversity. Um, and that and so, somehow, though, he made his way in as an international. Yeah. Uh, but so they picked three. So guess what? Guess who they picked? Oh. <laughs> what, what do you think? Did they pick? Did, did they did they mix it up? Did they get someone from Brazil uh, or, yeah, or a Latin, Latin American, no. a Polynesian, maybe? Polynesian. There's tons of Polynesians in the church. What'd no. they do? What, Frank, who did they pick? Uh, three white guys from Utah. Uh, born into the church. Oh damn! I lost a lot of money on that. <laughs> that was that was a foolhardy bet. Yes, it was a foolhardy this, bet. This was I don't know. I don't know why I was surprised. I was a little. I was. What, what was your reaction? Because I, I I will admit I was mildly shocked, but yeah. I think more than anything I was just wholeheartedly disappointed in 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 just. Uh, I them. yeah I I agree. You know? I was baffled. Mm-hmm. You know I I. In case you haven't noticed it from our prior conversations, I don't have a lot of love for the LDS Church. Right. But it is a thing, and it is in the world, and, it, and a, as long as it's around, let's hope it does less harm and more good. Right. And, yeah. and Especially because like, it's a major, like, powerful institution here in Utah. Yeah, here in the Intermountain and, West, and, it is, it, if you, it, it's a problem. And so the the hope is that that's less of a problem. Yeah. So these guys, even though they're on the board, they're they're on the board of directors of the church and everything. Really, they're just if if nothing else, they're symbols. Mm-hmm. And one guy can you know all these apostles do is they fly around the world and yell at women essentially, <laughs> right? It's just they just scold women and they just yeah. scold people. So. Right. A, a brown guy can do that as good as a white guy, and a black guy can do that as good as a white. So, right. uh, other than just yelling at women, they're symbols, right? So why not? 
embrace the, the church is having so many public relations problems and it's having yeah. s- it, it, it covering up its history for all these years. And now right. it's just squished out of all the corners. Well, You'd think they'd make some effort. Yeah. Well, I think though, it's a, it's a pretty schmancy little club. It's an yeah. exclusive club, but yeah. it's a big schmancy club. Yeah. And the members of clubs like that, they like people who are just like them. Yeah. You know, um, they don't, they don't want somebody who's going to, you know, stir the pot a little bit in the church. You Do know, you remember there was, they need to know 100% that they can trust this person. Yeah. And so when you start looking at who, that they don't who deviate. these men are, yeah. you know, um, one of them is the former CEO of Huntsman Chemical. Oh, wow. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, so he, he, I'm sure got the stamp of approval at some point. Um, to get into the sort of start getting into the higher yep. rank echelon of, of Mormon leadership um, from John Huntsman Sr. Right. You know, he's been fact, groomed. For, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. And yeah. probably, it, I mean, you know, behind the scenes politicking, you know, the Huntsman's got they've got a lot of power. Yeah. You know, um, and another one of them or actually it may have been the same guy. Uh <clears throat> excuse me, is, uh, was the mission president of Mia Love's husband. And it sounds like they're like in constant contact, Mia Mm. Love and he. Mm. Um, and so there, there's Mia Love being, uh, the congresswoman, a newly elected congresswoman from Utah. Um, or recently elected, I guess. Yeah. A black Mormon female. Yeah. Who is a, a pretty tiny demographic. Yeah. But yeah. yeah, but there, there she is. Very conservative. The, the main thing is she's got <laughs> access to the halls of power, and uh, and he has access to her. Yeah, you know. And so, I mean, I, I I hate to like speculate in that way on things that I don't know, but th- these these are people who are connected. They're in. They're tied into to. And to it's not just the ecclesiastical world. world. It's the business world. It's the business. World. You have to come from that. Yeah, that oh, good old yeah. boys club. Yep. I mean, this is basically how Freemasonry used to be, right? It was just, it was all the business in town was controlled, not in Salt Lake necessarily, but in mm-hmm. in big cities. That's how you kind of advanced. You had to be in with those guys, and that's how you got more business, and that's how you got, yeah. you know, moved up the ladder. Yeah. And these guys are the same way. But why it's so so upsetting is, or I don't know if it's, I don't, I don't know if I'm upset. I'm just baffled. <laughs> but why it's so weird is that this. According to stats, the the Mormon Church is getting no traction in the educated West. Right, it's getting nothing in North America, even though they have flooded the market with missionaries. Right, forty percent increase in missionaries with these eighteen year old kids. Right, and a four percent increase in converts. Wow. So they're getting it's not working. So right. they're getting no traction in the educated West. The only place they're getting traction is in parts of the world that are post colonial. That mm. are you know kind of shattered in different ways that are post Soviet, uh-huh. um, uh, and in a lot of you know South America people are rejecting the Catholic Church, but they're looking for something else. Right. So essentially, where they're getting traction is in the world that doesn't have the internet. Huh. Right. Um, so they're about to become a majority minority church. Like in the next ten or fifteen years, they're going to be minority over- majority. majority Minorities. Minor- Majority minority. Okay. Meaning the majority of the people will be non white. Oh, okay. Right? Okay. Or minority. I don't know. I think I think it's the, the minority are the majority, so it's minority. Those are words. <laughs> so so wh- it's insane to me that they did not choose to embrace that. Yeah. But there's also a part of me that that having grown up in it, Frank, and I'll bet you know you are conscious of this on some level, that there is some that the growth is what they want. Uh-huh. But there is some terror that mm. the growth they're getting is black and brown. Yeah. I think there's a lot of people who are not comfortable with that. Uh, yeah. You well, know and I, mean? I, I could see, I mean, it's always been the, I mean, the club that we've, we just sort of described and everything. It's a Utah centric, Utah based club. Yeah. Um, and, and often rural, like the older guys are the, the old, old apostles in the, Oh Yeah. You know, yeah, a lot of true. rural Utah and Idaho. Idaho. Yep. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, they, I, 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 I see them being very concerned about the power slipping. 
yeah you know the control and uh slipping i think other I, than this these three guys who are are just a missed opportunity for doing the right thing right um and just a good pr thing too just because it's just symbolic just one guy out of three yeah all they had to do was pick one one guy and they could have gone so safe with it. Yeah. All they needed was someone from Brazil. Yeah. I keep going to Brazil, but like there's plenty of rich guys in Brazil. Yeah. There's plenty of great businessmen yeah. in Brazil that you could hire. Absolutely. Yeah. And and uh and so it's it's just it's kind of confusing. Well, they what they definitely don't want is is somebody who's too obsessed cuz this was some some in some of the speeches I saw was this kind of pain to capitalism. Uh-huh. They definitely don't want a guy from the slums or a guy who's too sympathetic to that right. to come in and say, no, we need to shift the focus away from this, you know, fortune 500 style company to yeah. a social welfare. Yeah. They don't want their Francis. They do ex- precisely. Yeah. But it's interesting. Uh, my, my brother, I didn't go on a mission. My brother went on a mission to, to central America uh-huh. and, uh, we're white guys. And he said there was a 70 mm-hmm. who was uh, a Latin American when right. he was in his mission 20 years ago. And when that guy came through the Latin American mission or the Central American missions, he said that guy was so revered and so looked up to and was such a rock star yeah. because they saw in that right. that they could, that they were respected by their church and they could gain these, these positions. And, you know, this well, try just hearing in someone, Spanish yeah, in, and not just Spanish, but like in the, in the dialect, in the Patois. Yeah. Yeah. No, maybe not dialect, but in, in sort of. Unaccented Spanish. Yeah. yeah. The language that they're used to hearing yeah. presented to them and, and the way that they talk about the church being reflected back to them. Yeah. You know, instead of it being, you know, some colonial paternalistic. Yeah. Buenos dias, hermanos y hermanas. Hola. <laughs> Hola, hermanos de misionarias. <laughs> like, like George Bush style Spanish. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. You know, they're probably, their, their ears are probably tired of that. And so yeah. it's probably just like a glass of you know fresh yeah. drinking just well and it would it, it helps so refreshing it helps grind the edges off the very jagged reality of of mormon racism and the historical racism of the mm-hmm. church yeah. if you see somebody who's that's a recognition that that's over right but they didn't make that recognition I, and well, so i don't think it's over because it's thomas s monson yeah you need monson to be gone so well he or looked else, did you watch his speech I heard he looked like he was going to be gone by about the 13th minute. Wow. He, that, and, that, and that brings up another thing. I think that was cruel because he's not all there. Right. And somehow they got him to shuffle up there and try to read the teleprompters. And by the end, like his, his little energizer bunny was not, he was well, just going. I heard he went, he basically went white. He went, he was, of he was teetered for a second. sinking kind of yeah. below the podium and he started saying things twice. Uh-huh. So he'll, wow. he, yeah, that was kind of fucked so up. So he's not long. It was fucked up. But I was going to say, other than the three, this m- very major missed opportunity with these three guys. Yeah. The other theme, so I told Frank, I didn't know where to find, because I don't pay attention to conference either. I hate it. It's like a trigger for me. Yeah. I, I generally hate it. So well. I didn't know where to look for somebody who'd gone through, it, slogged through it and digested it for people like us and curated a little look what yeah. this asshole said. So I actually watched... Which, so many speeches front to back. I cannot believe you did yeah. this. I, it I was honestly cannot believe. I mean, my hat goes <laughs> off to you. And then I figured like, out I watched like three or four the other night. And then I figured out I'd watched the wrong conference. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watched the one earlier in the year and I was like, oh, I'm going to hang myself. Oh, that's it's that is dedication. Oh, dude. And I, I let's I, not do this again. No, 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 no. no. There yeah. will never be any uh, unless something like major happens. Well, I really don't want to talk about conference too much. But what's fascinating is that uh, having slogged through the wrong conference and then the right one. Mm-hmm. And other than watching Thomas Monson nearly die <laughs> on stage, which would have been that would have been a story. Yeah. The the missed opportunity of the three guys. The other uh, theme I took away from it was this there's this consolidation there's this rear guard action that's kind of like okay we've looked at we've we've stared modernity in the face and we don't like what we see so we're going to reject it so but how does that play out well they they were warned everybody about the internet they said stay away from the internet essentially do not read anything that is non-church approved and one of them went so far and i have this quote somewhere is to say basically don't talk to anybody who's not mormon what pretty much 
just stay away from stay away from any of the adversary's tools. And the adversary is Mormon for the devil. Right. So stay away from any of the adversary's tools that he can fool you with. And and <laughs> at one great example was this guy Elder Neil Anderson. Oh uh, yeah. And I don't know I I, who gives a shit? I don't have his middle initial here because I forgot it. So <laughs> nobody Q. knows. What yeah. Is it Q? No. Uh, I wish it was. Um, he he was really hitting on uh, all you need is faith alone. Do not listen to the faithless. And then he. So oh, my God. The so whole. Us. Don't listen to. Don't listen to. Thank God I'm atheist. Do and contribute. <laughs> but he you know, there's been all this stuff about Joseph Smith that's coming out. Hmm. You know, the church is admitted to his 40 wives, to teenage wives, to the peep right. stone, to all these crazy things they always pretended didn't exist. Right. So the way he decided to deal with this problem, uh -huh. and this is a quote from Neil Q.R. G. Anderson. Roy G. Biv. Roy G. Biv. He said, for example, and I can't quite do the, I can't do the conference, for example, the questions concerning the prophet Joseph Smith are not new. They have been hurled by his critics since this work began. Oh, no. To those of faith who, uh, looking through uh, the colored glasses uh, of, what is it, the colored glass, glasses of modernity, honestly question events or, or statements from nearly 200 years ago, may I share some friendly advice for you now? Give Brother Joseph a break. Oh, my. In a future day, you will have a hundred times more information than from all of today's search engines combined. Oh, and it no. will come from our all-knowing Father in Heaven. <laughs> the ultimate. Yeah. The, the great Google in the sky. The god goal. <laughs> so he's basically saying, just stop looking, stop asking. Ah. Yeah. So this is, this is what I take away from conference. Have they started their, their anti-intellectual thing again? I didn't hear that specifically. Huh. Um, their anti-feminism, anti-intellectual yeah. thing that they, they've, 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 they've droned on on that in the yeah. past that, uh, that was kind of Boyd K Packers beat. And yeah. I think since he's been reassigned, one of the guys said that too, that it's so many of the apostles this year were reassigned to higher callings in the next life, <laughs> which is, that's, that's how David Miscavige announced that L Ron Hubbard had died. <laughs> Okay. That he'd gone on to a to a greater oh, right. yeah, OT yeah. level. And I was just yeah. listening to that going, oh my God, Scientology and Mormonism just should merge <laughs> all of their properties. So so that was what my takeaway yeah. was just a lot of panic about the modern world. Huh. Well, I, I, one of, a couple of things that kind of hit me, or not hit me, but um, the, um, the, there was an actual verbalized defense of this of the aging leadership yeah of of the church and how it's actually a good thing he called it a, the word was gerontocracy yeah the the gerontocracy of the church um that was quentin cook i think was it was it quentin cook? Who, who first oh yeah um let's see david bedner it was bedner yeah yeah um he he got up and he until this this new round of, of apostles got appointed, he was the youngest yeah. of of all of them. He right? was six hundred. <laughs> yeah. He was a spring chicken. <laughs> uh but he says, and and this is uh from the Tribune, uh during my years of service, the average age of men uh serving in the first presidency in the Quorum of the Twelve has been seventy seven years. Yeah. Okay. Um and uh he, so so he's he's looking at this and he's like what 60 something and he says that it's a he has been blessed right by their quote collective apostolic ecclesiastical personal and professional experience and insight yeah whatever he's been hazed too much yeah. <laughs> i think they haze him He's a what do they call those in the a pledge? He's a pledge. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, oh, he's sixty three years old, um, and 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 he just he's up there just defending them. The Tribune was brilliant in uh, their photo selection uh -huh. for this article. It's just sort of the backs of the, the back of heads of three men. Uh, one is clearly uh, Thomas S. Monson. He's in the middle, and he's being helped back to his his chair after he was his little stint at the podium. Yeah. 
by Dieter Uchtdorf on one side, and I don't know, it's too much of a back of the head on, on the other guy. But it's just like this... A white guy. Another white another guy. Another white guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and and it's just this, it's just so strange that that someone would would see so much value in 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 the leadership of dying men um who are completely out of touch yeah you know who are terrified of the internet and don't know how to combat it they don't know how to pivot uh the, they don't know the how church, to use it or the for, church's message yeah um you know there there i'm i'm fairly confident there's no official lds snapchat <laughs> um you know, there probably is a... Thank God there isn't. It would be so sad. <laughs> it's the sadness that would be Snapchatted uh, and vined. It's just, yeah, one more. Uh, anywho. Uh, but, but you know, so... And he, and he says that... Um, you know, that, that in, in response to, 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 the, the, to this call, one of, the, one of the changes in the demographic that people were calling for, not just a racial shift or a nationality shift... Uh, in in representation in the twelve apostles, w- was just getting some younger people in there. Yeah, just please, please. Yeah. But if but if the only way to become the prophet is to outlive everyone seniority. Yeah, and the only way that you're that you leave the office is through death. Yeah, you're just going to have a bunch of old men sitting around waiting to become the prophet this or, isn't going to stop not. this right this it will always be a gerontocracy this disconnection to the way the world is at any given moment will continue right infinitely and so so bedner says um you know replacing aging apostles with quote younger more vigorous leaders to address effectively the serious challenges of our modern world um isn't the way that the lord works the Lord does not use contemporary philosophies or practices of leadership to accomplish his purposes. End quote. Um, <laughs> okay. You know, I mean, the, he's, he says that top Mormon leaders will always be older and spiritually seasoned men. No, they're dying men who uh, lack the vigor and yeah. the world worldview to run a, a quote world religion exactly which of course they aren't they just right. love to call themselves that the 15 million that they claim is also a lie vastly overinflated. um and uh and so it's just 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 to put just to put the light of that in the 2008 census self-reported mormons yeah and that's the honest way to derive who is a mormon by asking them face to face right you know, who is a mormon was 3.15 million in the two, United States. In the United States. Right. And they claim like seven, six or seven, I think. Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. baloney. Yeah. But uh, it's it's fascinating, too, the way that this, this gerontocracy works uh-huh. is, as I understand it, their speeches, what these guys say when they get up, are not vetted by anybody. Because who's, ab- who's above them to vet that? Right. Right. So who's going to say, no, you can't say this or... So you have these guys who are old enough to have fought in World War II. Right. Who, who, who are mostly, for the most part, grew up in rural Utah and Idaho. Right. Who, many of whom have only had church jobs. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they had a short professional career and then they were groomed for a church job. For 50 to 60 years, right. they only talk to each other. Right. Uh, they don't know anything, like you said, about the internet, about modern technology, about culture, about youth culture, about anything. Uh-huh. And so unvetted, they just get up at conference and say whatever they want. Right. And then there's this uh, massive church bureaucracy of people who are a little more in touch in their 40s and 50s. Right. That act almost as a fire department. Right. To try to manage the PR of, the, you know, being of an apostle calling people artificial families and... right. You know, it, saying all these terrible kind of hateful things right. and you know the youth is just hemorrhaging from this church right these poor pr guys that are like no that's not really what he said what it meant <laughs> it, it's it that's the, that's the problem with a gerontocracy yeah yeah um another way that they uh diversified the, actually there is a way that they diversified hmm. this go around and this is very interesting um and and apparently uh people have are sort of taken aback by this choice Apparently, uh, Dale Renland, Dale G. Renland, um, who, who is now a member of the uh, Quorum of the Twelve, hmm. 
uh, he uh, he specifically uh, is uh, bringing a different uh, bit of experience, life experience hmm. to 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 the leadership. Um, but because uh, his his wife, uh, who was a very successful uh, lawyer, apparently, so she, so he's married to a career woman. Ooh, and that's a only, little modern. And they only have one child. Whoa. This is radical. This is seismic. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Diversity. They've finally diversified. Well, do you know what's amazing is another... It was Quentin L. Cook, one of his quorum mates, uh -huh. went on a rant about small families. Oh, they're bad? Yes, because <gasps> he said small families are going to cause everyone in the world to be lonely. <laughs> I'm not shitting you. I wrote that. I went, I played it twice, and I rolled that back and wrote it down. I'm like, what? How does that work? There's not enough people. There's only eight billion of us. Yes, there just aren't enough for anyone to have any. Company. Farewell, humanity. <laughs> so anyway. I I tried to determine Frank uh -huh. the message the Lord was sending us oh, with okay. these new apostles. So okay. in all seriousness, I'm like, okay, I got to figure this out. Right. Why didn't they pick people that would have helped with the growth of the church in these other parts of the world? So I'm like, okay, there's there's a message here. Uh -huh. So I collated all the very important first or middle initials from the three members of the first presidency. <laughs> and the updated quorum of the 12. Okay. Okay. So we've got B S F M H D R A L D L A E G. Okay. Okay. These so, are letters to work with. Yes. You cannot be in the Mormon hierarchy without a middle initial. And that's or a first initial. Yeah. It's, you got to have an initial in there. So I right. think middle is more holy. The, also, science L. Ron Hubbard. Oh, my God. Yeah. Same We're deal. cracking this wide open. <laughs> so I put those 15 initials through an anagram generator. Oh, really? Yeah. Do you want to know what I got? Yeah, I would love to. No. Fresh, glad, damn, pound. Fresh? Yeah, glad. so pound is LB, like the okay. symbol for okay. pound. Yeah, that works. And then I got flesh, gram, pound, dad. Dad grounds flesh. No, gram. Oh, gram. So gram and pound are next to each other. Okay. Then I got flesh, drag, mad, pound. Then. Mad, pound, drag, flesh. Okay. Flash germ pound ad. <laughs> then it gets more interesting. Farms had geld pound. Oh, yeah. okay. Uh, you see where this is going? They had geld pound. Geld so like, pa like gold. Like Yiddish for gold or money. Yeah. Yeah. So farms had yes. gold, had a pound of gold. You're seeing the pattern. Yes. Okay. And then I got half germs pound dad. <laughs> Half germs pound dad. Yeah. So you that, know what all that, that means? That actually conjures an image. Yeah. Yeah. Of, see, of a half germ pounding. You father. see the message. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and then I added all the initials from the presidency of the 70, the general authorities. Oh, this is where it gets good. And the presiding bishopric, <laughs> uh, mostly because one of them had an E because we need a vowel. Yeah. Okay. And I put all 50 something, 80 of those into an anagram thing and it said, go away. But uh, it couldn't make an anagram. <laughs> Too many. So I don't know. I'm I'm not sure what to take from that, except that it probably doesn't mean anything. <laughs> yeah. Well, I uh, I have a coworker. This is brilliant. Uh, he um, he's very 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 into astrology, the uh -huh. zodiac, right? Uh -huh. And so he's already. I need to talk to him a little bit more about this, but he's already run <sighs> a new chart for how the the leadership has shifted based on their birth dates. Right. Are you serious? Yeah, he That's run, amazing. He, he runs star charts on like all the leadership of the church. So he's a big Mormon. No. Oh. He's he 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 served a mission. Huh. Uh, was a temple worker, like and in the Salt Lake Temple. Wow. Um. So and, he was in. Uh, he's he been inside. Stories. He yeah. has some stories about working the veil at the Salt Lake Temple. Oh. Um. But um. He has since very much left. He doesn't believe an ounce of it. And he <laughs> and he has he harbors all the same sort of like weird resentment that you and i have right. right and yet is so into astrology it, it, in a serious way completely 100 percent believes it like if he drops a drink does he go oh mercury's in retrograde is he that guy <laughs> yes yes i've known that guy yeah 
<laughs> whenever anything is wrong right. at work. I and and it's just like a shitty day. Yeah. And I'm like I, I'm always just like, Hey, Jason, do you think Mercury's in retrograde? <laughs> and he always stops and he's like he's like, Well, huh. I I haven't heard that. I'll have to check. Yeah. Like he's, I've known that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. Yeah. But anyway, so he he did this shift from like Mormonism to this and but has this obsession with the church leadership, right? He actually visits all of their grave sites, right? Whoa. Yeah. It, it's this really wild. What an he, interesting he's, guy. He's really, really interesting. I love talking to him. Because uh. he, his perspective is always just like so unique and so, so different. So and, what do the stars tell us about this new? I, I, I was just, it was in passing and I didn't have time to really stop and talk to him and, and, and really listen. In is Kolob in retrograde? <laughs> Look it up. If you don't know it, look it up. Oh, that's what I'm going to have to ask him next time. <laughs> I really need to. Oh, my God. Anyway. Well, I think we've we've beat the dead horse of General Conference enough. Yeah, we have till um, next April when it happens again. So gird your loins. Well, next time we won't even acknowledge that it happened. Please, God. No. Unless, of course, Thomas S. Monson dies. And the new guy. You mean he's reassigned? <laughs> he's reassigned to heaven. To to the worms. Uh, and uh, and the new guy picks like somebody from South America to replace himself. Yeah, that would that, be that would be that would be interesting. But beyond that, I don't really feel like ever talking about general conference again. And I bet the listeners don't really ever want to hear about it again. And if you are just completely upset that we bothered you with for. 40 minutes talking about general conference Oy. or maybe I'll edit it down to about 20 minutes. It was all good um, stuff. Though. It was good stuff. Um, Especially my anagrams. <laughs> but nonetheless, if you'd like to join the conversation, chime in. Uh, you can always email us podcast at thank God I'm uh, or you can call us and leave a voicemail message, which will we, we may play on the show. Um, and the telephone number for that is 424-666-8442. We do appreciate all the voicemails that we get. We're unable to play them all clearly. Um, but we, um, we, we do, we always appreciate everybody chiming in and, and likewise for the, for the emails. Uh, you can also, uh, follow us during the week at, uh, facebook.com slash TGI atheist. Uh, Mackenzie, uh, is, uh, she runs that for us and she does a fantastic job and uh, keeps it vibrant and, and going. Uh, and then there's also uh, our closed group on Facebook uh, called the TGIA Members Only Lounge. You have to search for it, and you have to then request to join it. Um, believe you me, you, d you, you, you really don't need to email us uh, unless it's like a ridiculous amount of time, which I guess that's all relative. Um, but if it does take us a minute to, to get you into it, it's just because Dan does vet everybody who, who, who gets in. And he doesn't exclude you if you're South American or black. No. Unlike that other club. So, <laughs> But we, also, we will also uh, kick you out if you don't behave yourself. Um, Even if you're white. Mackenzie called me uh, the, a couple days ago and was like, I just had to kick someone out. Really? I'm like, please. Someone thank was you. being a stinker? Uh, someone was, was, uh, was in there saying nasty things and hmm. just kind of not up to any good then apparently. you get the heave ho and so you know you you will be you might get away with it for a minute um but eventually if you if you can't behave yourself you know you'll just be kicked out yeah. easy enough and then all of your posts guess what they all get deleted automatically when we do that so everything that you think you might be leaving it's all harsh. the nasty shit it's just gone it's harsh yeah so sorry about that guys but we like to run a nice you know clean friendly operation yeah. so all right. Well, thank you, of course, to the Red Rock Hot Club for the use of their music. And thanks again to Mackenzie. Um, and uh, thank you, Mark. This has been great. Thank you, Frank. Three really awesome episodes. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And uh, we'll have to have you back just as soon as Dan if or I am missing again. Uh, yeah, incapacitated. So. <laughs> I, I'm, uh, With any accident. Yes. The falls. Mm, mm. <laughs> yeah. Well, if the thing with if this this guy Dan doesn't work out, just give me a call. <laughs> all right. We'll do. Uh, all right. And thank you, dear listener, for listening. Thank you. Bye. Bye.